Hi, John here. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how I assembled and wired my timer sign. Before we snap these shut, I thought I'd give you a quick look inside the one of the dots, how I wired mine. I've got the ground and data in on this side, and I have the data out in the plus 5 volts on this other side. Seemed easier to just have two wires on each end. You have to have the data in on one and the data out on the other, but you don't. it doesn't matter which grounds or which of the 5 volts you use. Alright, so what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll line these all up. And I will just hot glue them down to this piece of plywood that I painted black. Same with the dots here. I'll just drill little holes that line up with these um, access holes. Run all the wires out the back. Now when you're gluing your digits down, don't put the diffuser covers on because the, the covers will make it more difficult to bend them back like this. You can easily hold them down like this and kind of bend them up a little bit and put some glue in there underneath there and then set it back down and hot glue hardens like almost right away so that thing is glued on and we're done you just keep going and I used the T-square when I did the tops and then I took it off so I can more easily access the bottom again I can easily bend tip these up and put some glue in here without the diffuser covers on and just keep going all right now I got the four main digits all glued down here but the dots and this little guy are not yet glued down I haven't quite figured out yet how to really align these I suppose it doesn't matter that much this was supposed to have 30 millimeters between each one of these gaps. And as long as that's this case, it doesn't really matter if it's twisted because it's round and symmetric anyway. So I'll just eyeball these, I guess, and put some a dab of glue in there. Now it doesn't take a lot of glue to do these. I actually put a little bit too much in here. It came off the side. It's okay. It doesn't matter. It's not going to really be that visible anyway. People are not going to be anywhere near as close to where I'm sitting now when they actually see this thing. It's be viewed from across the room. Now this little one over here, the idea with this was I wanted this to counting in tenths and these to be seconds and the others to be in minutes. Just so that, you know, if you glance at the sign, there's some action and, and, and activity going on. Even if you glance at it for a moment. Now, well, after you glue only on one end, you can still sort of kind of cheat a little bit and twist the other end. So I'm going to just do this first one and let it harden. And then I'm going to recheck my measurement. Even if it's wrong, it doesn't matter. As long as the top and bottom at the same distance between the two segments... It'll look right. All right, so the next step is to build some sort of a case or frame for this. Now, you could just use it the way it is, digits on a piece of wood, and put it on a stand, or lean it against the wall, you'd be done. But what I want to do is I'm going to take the, I got some 2x4s, and I cut them about a foot long. They're the length of the, of the plywood here. And I cut these notches out with a table saw so that they can fit on the end like this and it sits over the edge like that. These, clamp, these, these latches on the ends here, I have these longer ones here for the top and the bottom. The corners come together with these latched, um, these butterfly latches that I got on like Amazon. These are kind of big and a little bit bulky. If I did this again, I would find some smaller latches. These are also kind of expensive, but I thought it might be fun. I don't know, they look kind of neat. You know, like road case type of thing. So uh, you'll notice there's two slots in here. One of them is for this plywood and the digits. And then in front of the digits, I'm going to put this piece of smoked polycarbonate. This is probably cost you around $25 if you wanted one of these. You buy it on the internet somewhere. The polycarbonate also fits in to these notches just like the plywood. So it'll have a plywood, the digits inside, with a polycarbonate in the front. This will, the, the, the smoked polycarbonate will add 
a, a, an increase in contrast, which will make the digits much easier to read than if they were just out in the open, although they're still very readable as it is. So I'm getting all the wires ready to be uh, connected together for all the digits now. Uh, as you can see, this is the, the little one and so on. The, the way the data was, is going to flow through my sign is it'll go to the little one first, then it'll flow into two of the big digits, which are these two right here. Then it'll flow out of this digit. It'll go into the two colon dots. Then it'll flow into the uh, other two digits. I've pulled the, the ground wires down. The hot wires will all go up like this for each one of these guys. The data in, I've stretched out to this direction here on my left. The data out will go over on my right. The data in for the next one the same way and so on. Every while I tip it back and I double check the color so I know the data out here is white and the data in for this one is yellow and so on. Double and triple check because nothing will be more annoying than to have to cut all these, put them all together and then redo it when you're done. So uh, I will then run one wire all the way across here for the 5 volts and another wire across here for the ground and then I'll only have the one data in and this will daisy chain through all of them and then we're done. Do not use electrical tape to insulate these connections. I have these little pieces of heat shrink tubing that I'm going to use. This is vastly superior. It will not fail. Electrical tape will eventually just get loose and come off and the whole thing will fall apart. Alright, so these wires didn't quite reach so I put a little jumper in here. No big deal. So just twist them together. The data in and the data out daisy chain and solder them up. Don't just twist them, twist them and solder them. And then when you're done with that, put on the uh, heat shrink tubing. I actually put the heat shrink tubing on the wire before you solder it. Otherwise you won't have it there when you're done to slide it over like that. Oops, I forgot I wanted to put filter capacitors along all these power uh, lines back here as well. So uh, I'll have to make sure that when I run my power and ground that they'll be close enough together so that I can hook these capacitor leads across one for each one of these LEDs. Remember we're going to be drawing like seven amps on mine anyways because I got so many LEDs on here. So you need to have a lot of local uh, uh, filter capacitors otherwise the, the, uh, the, the, the power itself will end up with noise on it and noise will cause the LEDs to make errors in their interpretation of the data and the colors will get all screwed up and they won't light correctly. So looking at these capacitors just now, I kind of noticed they're kind of big and bulky. If I put them on the back like this with these wires, uh, they're going to just get squashed and destroyed and mess up my sign. Because I'm going to be throwing this in and out of my car and things like that to bring them to STEM Fest uh, events, which is why I made it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two little holes in the plywood for the leads and put them in the front and just leave the leads go through just like the power leads and then just wire them in the back. I'll paint the top black and then no one will even see it through the smoke glass. It's almost like I designed it that way. <laughs> when you put the capacitors in there, put them all in the same way. The big giant negative sign on the bottom, because remember I pulled all the grounds down in the back and power the plus fives up. You're going to want to hold the capacitor flat against the front of the board when you bend the leads apart so that you know it's seated correctly. Now, if I had 18 gauge wire, I would have used it. Uh, this is 14 gauge, uh, solid core 14 gauge. You can buy this at the hardware store. It would probably be best if you actually just cut little notches out like this for each one of the things and left the insulation everywhere else. But doing so, oh, would be a giant pain in the butt. So when you're trying to hook up a ground line or a power line on a project like this, you kind of want to pre-bend it, kind of give it an eyeball to make sure it reaches. You got enough wire, it goes where you want it to go. And then uh, tuck all the wires where they, you know, if they want to be on the top, make sure you get them on the top and not the bottom before you uh, attach your, your, your ground wire here. I'm going to just put a big old blob of hot glue on here to hold it where I want it to be. And when you're tacking down, a big piece of wire like this that you're then going to solder afterwards. Don't put the glue too close to where you're going to be soldering because copper is the is an incredibly great heat sink. So while you're heating it up here it'll melt all the glue over there. 
So when you're tacking down a ground wire like this or a power line, you want to make sure that it naturally, the wire itself kind of naturally stays where you want it to be anyway. <sighs> because when you heat this wire up here to solder it, it could melt this glue and then the thing would then pop off. So it's okay to melt it, or it's even okay for it to pop off. You just don't want it to get all nuts and turn into a big pretzel while you're trying to solder. <laughs> and so the wire that I'm just tacking down here is going to be used for ground. So I'm going to take all the ground wires and cut them about the right size here. And then strip them back so I can solder them on. Be careful when you're stripping them that you don't yank the thing off of the LED on the other side. So I'm going to hold onto it like that. To solder the little ground wires onto the giant ground bus wire, I'm bending it around a little bit, finagling it until it wants to just set on there on its own. Then, when I solder it, I can heat up. It'll take a while to heat up the 14 gauge a lot longer than it'll take to heat up the 24 gauge before the solder will want to adhere to it. So don't overheat the little wire because the insulation up here will just melt all over the place. and It'll become a mess. And grab your clippers and snip off the little excess there. Okay, so I just finished hot glue tacking down all the wires. Trimmed them, soldered them all together. I tracked them all down. As you can see here, the uh, idea is to make sure that they don't get tangled or snagged on things. This is the main data input that's not yet been hooked up. And this is the data line that, that daisy chains between all the uh, different uh, digits and the colons and so on. So I've gone ahead and mounted this power supply and hooked it up. You'll see I've, I've labeled this bus up here plus 5 volts and this one's negative. So that in the future, should I have to tinker with this, I will not forget which is which. Um, the plus terminal on this particular power supply is up here, the minus is down there. Mild unfortunate because these wires now have to cross, so I had to take a black wire here. This is an insulated wire that crosses over the bare wire here that comes up for the plus 5. That's a little unfortunate, but no big deal. If I built another one, I put the minus up here and the plus down here, then the wires won't have to cross, but no big deal. Uh, just make sure this is insulated because this is like 50 watts coming out of here. If you short this, things will get hot and become a problem in, in short order. Uh, to mount this, I drilled some holes and I bolted it in. You can see the bolts here and here. I had to make sure that I didn't drill into one of my LEDs when I did that. So be careful if you're going to do that sort of thing. Uh, these might be kind of shiny. I'll hit them maybe with some black paint before I put the... Uh, before uh, I put the cover on along with these capacitors and so on. Just getting the diffusers on here for a final dry run on the assembly here. Basically this is all wired. Power should be good. Should be able to assemble it up. This in here like so. Put the dots on there. The covers on everything. And this little guy go. So the end fits on like this. The latch hooks in there. Now these are spring-loaded latches so if I tighten them they'll bend back a little bit. I don't want to do that just yet to the point there. So there we go. I can just tighten them up a little bit just so that it holds. There we go. Let's go ahead and put the uh, polycarbonate in there. Now this is actually out of a used junk bin. It is actually a little bit scratched up. So I'm going to put the scratches on the inside so they're a little bit less easy to see. I'll save a few dollars when I can. There we go. Beautiful. Latch the end there. Oh, yep. There we go. lined up and there we have giant clock that's 
power it up and run the test code because it's one still one long strip of LEDs, which is all wire jumpers going through there. So we should still be able to line them all up with the same code we used uh, on the uh, LED uh, strip test. Well, here we are. Moment of truth. I just downloaded this Arduino with the LED strand test that we ran before. And I've got the ground. Oops, I just pulled out the data line. The data line is in output number six in the ground is shared with the ground on the back plane of the thing I just did all the soldering on. So I'm going to power on the LEDs, plug in the Arduino for power. Oh yeah! Perfect! Remember that these are two strands in each one of these so it has to go around twice to light them all. Cone lights up. Hopefully the last, there we go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Beautiful, and it works. <laughs> Excellent. These guys might be a little bit brighter. I'll have to tune that when I write the final software. Um, if I want this to look as bright as these, I might have to dim these down a little bit or something like that. But that is super cool. Super cool. I hope that picks up good on the camera. Turn off the lights here. Woohoo!